our pleasure to have Dr. Alexis Nelson to, to give the talk on learning communities. Uh, the topic is learning communities, what's in it for students, what's in it for faculty. And this is our second round back in the winter quarter, and we appreciate your offer, Dr. Um, Nelson. And I, I know that um, Alexis has a very touching story about how you benefit from your, uh, when you pursue the PhD degree, how you benefit from learning communities. Maybe you want to tell us, <laughs> talk about it a bit in your talk. And I see some new faces here too. So do we need to introduce ourselves to, to the speaker? Can we, yeah. Can we do that, like, uh, sure. tell us your name and then what, uh, like, what is it you work from? Maybe start by you. Um, good morning, everyone. My, my name is John. I'm from South Korea. Um, I'm taking her English language community class this quarter. So I want to talk about um, from students' perspective. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So thanks for inviting me here today. Thank you, John. Converse Day, English, I'm here to say, yeah, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Janae, I'm from Life Science. I'm actually not a faculty, I'm a lab technician, but I'm here just to kind of get a feel for what's going on, and learning communities has always interested me, so. Did you take Chris's class? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm the new Chris. Okay. It's the new Chris. Nice. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm Sarah, I'm in anthropology, and I've done two learning communities and plan to do two more next year. Yeah. I'm Jim McClure, uh, philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Wise person. And with a dissertation on learning communities. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That's why you're here. That whole reason. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm Joe Johnson, uh, political science. Wow. <laughs> and precise. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ken Cummers, and I'm business manager. Thank you, Scott. Travis Warner, PE Athletics. Yes. yes. Thank you for coming for help. I'm Jingping. Uh, I, I teach sociology. So. Oh, yeah, Heather. Hey, Heather. Can you introduce yourself to us? We are just going to start. <laughs> My name is Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Famous person. And Mary, can you introduce yourself? Uh, from the library. library. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Great. so what, what I gave everybody is a piece of paper that I don't want you to turn over yet. What I want you to do is to write down on that, on the blank side, mm. the college course which gave you the most excitement or delight. The college course that gave you the most excitement or delight. Mm -hmm. College, an undergraduate level, Under, right? No, I'm not just specifying. Okay. Yes, Joe? As an instructor or? As, as a, a student, student, as a learner. If you can remember back that far. That's Me, fun. I can. I can. <laughs> so, so write down the course and what, and then two sentences, what was it about that course that made you happy or delighted you? Oh, you brought your own pen. Did you hear the question? No. Okay. okay. I'm not looking for more than two or three sentences. Just one course, right? Just one course. Mm -hmm. Once you have that information down, what I want you to do is turn to the person closest to you and share the reasons for that course being exciting to you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can three and two are fine. 
three and two are fine. What is the Yeah. I That's okay. I just do. Okay. All right. What you get? I'll go first. Are we just giving the reasons? Yeah, yeah. What are your reasons? So what and what are your reasons? Um, I was excited because it's a chance to introduce my knowledge and my interviewing process. And it's a real life topic of being like really hands on. Write first, then you can join it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I have a pen. I need a I don't know how the qualitative research. That is my first year in the graduate school in Chinese University of Hong Kong. So the two things that make me excited is to open the whole new world. Yeah, you are a goddess. I know that another thing is. Yeah, right. A lot of the yeah. academic research done yeah. and interviews by us. Uh, 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 Delighted? Delighted? Or excited? Yeah. yeah. I don't think there was a scripter, especially. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. 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 Okay, what well, I know everybody's name at this point, so what I'm going to do is call on them. Any theme of emerging or about excitement or delight? Oh, in terms of doing what? Okay, energetic. Okay, funny and engaging. We are, we're all that, Ken. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula, what did you, did? what came up in your group? Both of us, we wanted to be active and hands-on, and we remember the classes where we got to. Be active, active and hands on. And do something and make something. Okay. Uh, Mary, what came up in your group? For Well, I think for both of us who presented, <coughs> I <didn't laughs> listen to Hannah's yet. <laughs> well, I think it had, for both of us, had to do with discovering something about a topic or aspect of the topic that we hadn't really thought about before or experienced before. Okay, so energy, um, hands on. Discovery. Discovery. What did you guys come up with? Oh, I didn't really talk. I talked to John about something else. Oh. <laughs> There's always one. There's always what one. The <laughs> and Janae, in your group, what, what themes came up? We talked about having new chances to use like basic concepts and so higher level thinking. Application, higher level thinking. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, those are exactly the justifications for learning communities. And if you flip that p p colored piece of paper over, what you'll find is some official documents from the website. Um, but what I wanted to do, because this is what are learning communities good for for students, and I, and I dragooned one of my students in this quarter's learning community, um, and I wanted him to have a chance to talk. I wanted, I wanted students to speak for students before I spoke for them. So John, if you would talk to, about what makes a learning community appealing to you. Yes. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, once again, thanks for inviting me here to talk about why a learning community is good for students. Mm -hmm. um, this is my uh, perspective. Since I'm from South Korea speaking different language, I really have a hard time to understand and follow the material. But one thing I really like um, in this group is seminar, which is really helpful 
to I can contribute more, and even I miss communication or misunderstanding, and then they correct me as a as a student. So it's like more I can involve more in group instead of being dependent. So, um, so like yes, seminar is the best and right now, and then of course uh, Dr. Nelson help helping me every day. Every single minute. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, seminar is the best for students, I think, so far. Does anybody have any questions for John? Because I told him he could have a short visit. What is your uh, learning community about? Like, what are the courses there in that community? What courses? Yeah, what course in that? Usually it's like at least two, right? Two yes, classes um, putting together. Right now it's English 102 and English 111. And we are reading four books with short poetry and then four, uh, short stories. So the books include the books Beowulf, Beowulf mm -hmm. Othello, Inferno. Dante Inferno, and Frankenstein. We are reading Frankenstein right now. Mm. I mean, it's an astonishing achievement for any learner, but for somebody who's an English language learner, it's awesome. John, have you been able to get to know the other students in the class better than uh, classes outside of a learning community? Um, so let me compare to last quarter I had history class. It was large class, but I just knew next to me or in front of me or <coughs> the person who said shit or said so like learning community, I know everybody. Mm. You know. So it's really, it wasn't really hard to talk to during history class compared to it's really easy to talk in learning community class. Before you signed up for the class, what what drew you to it? Like, what made you want to take it? Um, I was going to take English 111 anyway for you know, getting a degree. And then Mr. Professor Burstig was my English 101 teacher, and then I talked about it, and he gave me some advice. And, and then, of course, I talked to Dr. Nesson before this class, and then she said, yeah, you will be fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yes, I am. I'm still surviving. Yes. <laughs> so that's why I chose um, her class. Any more questions? Any more questions? He needs to eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that I think is a, I mean, I, I can encapsulate what everybody said about interest, te teachers' interest, teachers' excitement, um, working closely with instructors, that's another advantage of learning communities. This is the one he didn't talk about. Mm. We had a, have a person in the class who is constantly interrupting, mm -hmm. constantly over-talking, mm -hmm. and there is one guy in his seminar that stops her cold. John was talking. And mm -hmm. that doesn't come, mm -hmm. that comes out of respect for him because he's working so hard. And I, I mean, that, that sort of student-to-student -student interaction is so powerful um, as a teacher to watch students be in charge of their welfare, their well-being, their commitment to learning. That's just thrilling. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the other advantages of the learning community is, is working closely with instructors. Because there's a sort of breakdown of the hierarchical model of the sage on the stage, you have a situation where one person is learning from another person, and they are both adults, and they are both expert learners. So when my colleague Levon is lecturing or running a writing workshop, I am taking notes. And that turns out to have been very handy because Levon got sick this quarter, and so now I'm doing both. Oh. But um, so I know what to do on the days that she's up. So I think that's really wonderful. Um, I also think the frequency of writing, and it doesn't have to be writing, it can be any hands-on activity. I mean, there's lots of composing that happens in the classroom as well as seminar papers, but there's also lots of, I mean, we've had, we've had learning communities that were art mediums, I don't know why it's not medium, 
uh, art mediums and chemistry. Well, that's hands-on creation. Okay, so that that gets to what people said was exciting in their experience. That's why London News. And for me, one of the reasons that I like it so much as a teach as watching, it's a better model. It's a better epistemology for college, because many students arrive thinking it's. Um, that they are the empty vessels and you're going to pour knowledge into them. And you can't pour knowledge into them. They have to make it. And I think learning communities are a system that helps students learn to make their own knowledge. Yeah. Is there a, what is the cap on enrollment for learning communities? It would depend on um, the, the um, type, whether it's a two-way or a three-way okay. or a link. And I will give you the piece of paper, the colored piece of paper that everybody else got. Okay. Because, that has it on the back. Okay, so the other thing I did, because I don't like to be the sage on the stage, and I know how to make a community, and you saw it in action right away, is um, I brought Tom to talk about what he saw as the teaching advantages of learning community. What's in it for a teacher? Although I could ask several people in this room yes. since, boom, 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 you, you've all taught learning communities. Yeah, I mean, so I'm sort of preaching to the choir. I mean. uh, <laughs> Uh, and I'll uh, just note, I mean, I've been doing these, I think, well, I, I remember when Alexis and I did our first learning community together, uh, Composition and Fiction, which we've done a number of times. It was in 1992. I remember this because one of our students' names was Clinton Bush, probably still is. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to forget that. Oh. Uh, and we've done that several times since. I, I've done a three-way with comp, lit, and psychology. I've done a two-way with composition and developmental math. Uh, I've done some paro more parochial ones, you know, uh, lit and comp, and, uh, and developmental reading and study skills and comp. So, so that my dad done me. And, uh, I mean, basically, I would, more than anything, just want to see uh, second, what Alexis already said. I mean, I learned one, as I know now, and as I do in my English 102 and uh, in intro to lit classes, uh, even standalones, uh, I use seminars now. But I never would have started using seminars if it weren't for learning communities. And there is no venue that I know of, and we all know from grad school, yeah, that's basically what a grad school class is. You got, 10 people or so sitting around talking about this text that you've all read. Um, and that's the model for seminar. Students are just are totally responsible for their own learning in seminars. And Alexis already pointed out some of the kinds of interactions that go on there. So I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I, as an instructor, am most grateful for uh, uh, that I've got to do in the that concept of seminary. I mean, I've just learned lots of practical stuff from my colleagues. Uh, when I work with folks in other disciplines, I just, I mean, I, I gain new knowledge. Uh, and I think that uh, perhaps so do they. Uh, uh, I can think of a few specific things. Uh, in some of the ways that I now ask students to reflect on their own writing, I learn from either Alexis or Barbara Williamson or Kelly Fisher. Uh, those are all colleagues in the English department, and I suppose I could have asked them about this on their own, but I, I learned this, uh, or these various techniques, because I was working with them in learning communities. Oh, that's a cool idea. And, uh, uh, I, from uh, Kim Taylor in Psych, uh, I, I, I've stolen texts that she used, like Vic, uh, Victor Franco's uh, Manuscripts or uh, which is a big text to her. Uh, or at least it was a few years ago. I don't know. Yeah, no, it was a few years ago. Um, and, and, and I've used that in my classes now, and I've gotten some, uh, some sense of how to use it, uh, thanks to her. So those are some of the ways. I would, I would just say, I mean, it's a commonplace now to 
to, to recognize that, that knowledge is made in community. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can take a lot of the stuff back and then employ it in your own standalone classes, but there's more synergy, more interaction in the way you do this. That's why it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, Sarah, what would you what, what would you add to that? And then I'm gonna call on Heather too. I think for me I I learned a new way of looking at my own content. Ah. I think that it really it really does require you to think about, well, on the development design side of your course, it really requires you to think about, what am I, these are the course objectives I have to meet, what is it that I put in my course that maybe doesn't, it's fun to do, but maybe doesn't actually get at that, mm -hmm. and therefore kind of thinking about that redesign, but also, just in general, how do you, how do you approach the content for me so they can write about it with being bridged with English, so they actually can successfully come out with a paper for a portfolio or for 102, so that's that was a lot of fun. That really learning how to how to do that and really taking a, a different view, a different approach to how I presented the content, and how I viewed the content. So that that was really a lot of fun. Heather, well, <clears throat> I've never taken a sabbatical, but I imagine that teaching in a learning community is a lot like being on sabbatical because for me it's just completely different from what I usually do. All new, exciting. Uh, developing something with someone. I love the collaboration, um, but it's just kind of that recharging and getting out of the rut of the same thing that you do all the time. That's really good for me. <clears throat> and you not find, though, that, that once you've been recharged, you can take some of that new stuff yeah. back? Yeah, play. definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm loving teaching cultural for the first time. As a standalone for the last, last two quarters, I've taught it with the learning community. Mm -hmm. And it's so, I love it. Like, it's there's so much more energy to bring back to your standalone. Oh, that's, I think that's a wonderful argument, even a budgetarily sensible argument. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna recap what, what I heard and just um, also my own experience because I, I was really lucky about, I don't wanna think how long ago, but I did a faculty exchange with SCC and I was in a learning community that was physics and philosophy and writing. And so that was uh, quite an extraordinary, I almost thought of a vulgar term. Um, <laughs> it was an extraordinary experience because we started with a wonderful book about cosmology. And um, it was oh, Coming of Age in the Milky Way by Ferris, F-E-R-R-I-S. And it's a, it's a dandy book and it's beautifully written. He's got an appointment in journalism and physics at Stanford, not too shabby. Um, and then the next, and we also used the physics textbook because that's what the physics teacher was used to. But the next time we did it, he didn't want to use the textbook. He wanted to use a primary source. So we did, and we're reading things like Huygens and Galileo and Copernicus, and you know, that's like, man, I never had a course that made me read Galileo. I never had a course that made me read about optics. I mean, you know, English teachers run screaming from the room when those kinds of things come up. So that wasn't part of my undergraduate education, but I think what's really lovely is that once you've become an expert learner, you know how to drill down. And I don't think a lot of students know how to drill down when they enter. So this lets them see that, okay, this is new for her, I can do it, you know, and, and I think that's pretty delightful. So, um, yeah, I got to study physics. I, got to, I took a math course because of a learning community that didn't make. I took Math 107 at Spokane Falls because that one didn't gel and I stayed in the room. So I learned liberal arts math after surviving doctoral statistics. That's, you know, that's the wrong order for doing things. <laughs> um, um, I also learned, I think this goes to what you said, Sarah, it under, you see the philosophy that undergirds other disciplines, and that is also very useful for an academic life. Because if your assumptions are, well, how is critical thinking like creative thinking when we're doing outcomes, you have, okay, you know you have to bridge that, or you have to separate it, but you have to have a modus vivendi. And I think learning communities are part of that community effort to create um, fruitful disagreement and consensus at this also. So I think that's a plus of it. 
and uh, meeting new faculty, learning to work well with people, those are, the, those are the life skills we want our students to have, and I think learning communities help us model that. But I'll tell you, it's relief from hearing myself drone on. There, it, I tire myself. I've said this before. Oh, I've said this before for 34 years. That's kind of boring. So seeing the way somebody else makes the point is so enriching. Um, and I think, I think we're, I'm, fit, I'm just right, we can all answer questions because lots, and Jim can answer all the theoretical questions because they're in his dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> to add something too to the discussion, uh, I ran into one of the students, uh, Levon and I had in spring, mm -hmm. and he is part of student government now, and he, he was just asking all these questions, well, how do we get most students to sign up for learning communities? Because for him, he's like, the content was great, you two were great, but he's like, it was this idea of just learning how to balance my time and how the structure was and how having a community and how that helped. And they had seminars. We changed it to book groups last quarter, mm -hmm. but it was, it was really inspiring because he's like, well, how do we do this and what can we do about getting more students involved in learning communities? How do we advertise it? It was right after your email came out. So I said something like, well, how about we try to get the faculty that I've taught before in a room with students? And I was like, and let you guys try to, as a student government, recruit students to come to like a fair. So they were interested, student government's interested in possibly helping with that in terms of advertising all their communities. Great, because just as it has helped in so many ways, CTC Link has really fostered <laughs> a pit in registration for learning communities. So we're experimenting this quarter with um, putting them in this in the system with the a analogous courses in the same department. Oh, interesting. But we don't know how that'll work. It's being fostered both here and at SCC. So we'll see how that goes, and we're hoping for the best. I don't. We've always printed brochures and gotten them to advisors, and I'm not. Sh I mean, I feel like we should be sending things on social media. Um, instead of the usual, or in addition. Yeah, it was his first quarter, I guess it was his first quarter, so he said it was like one of the best ways to begin being at college. So this might be a fruitful pathway. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I know that, that Eastern is exploring what they're calling first year experience, sort of a cohort building, and, and they, they, don't, they don't do it um, Parallel, like learning communities are here, but they're looking at doing it sequentially, so that you have uh, two professors teaching one the quarter after the other, uh, with um, at least one common text and a common theme. And there's supposed to be some overlap, but I know that some of the the discussions that they're having have to do with um, with the skill building, and that's why I'm wondering if, if you're a student mm -hmm. who, if you come your your first quarter, and, and as we all know, a lot of the students, it, it's like they have a grab bag of skills. And can you do a close reading? Can you do um, improvisatory writing? Can you do critical writing? Can you do creative writing? And some, they can do some and not others. And it seems like like a learning community could be a great time, to, especially if, if you can get more disparate fields like philosophy <laughs> and physics and English, which I think would be fantastic. Um, to sort of, it is like a, like literally a triage mm -hmm. of of skills, um, especially for these some of the kids that come with. They can do some skills, but they don't have others. But then, I think when they see it relating to various disciplines, because I think a lot of us get in this idea of well, what are the skills that I need in my close little path, because I need to get this job or a better job, and everything's about a job, and it's not about learning. Um, but when you get that that cross fertilization, that that people see the skills for the different disciplines and, and just a broader, more solid education. So that's why I'm learning, I'm interested in doing one, and, and, and Sarah and I have, have done some linking, and then Tim Greenup and I are going to do some linking next winter. Um, I'm, I hesitate to ask, but I'm sort of curious to know, has any of them gone badly? Like, oh, yeah. like oh, everything no. is like a giant <laughs> But I wanted it's all sweetness and light. And I, yeah. and I, I know that's not true. So somebody tell me, like, like a crash and burn, because I want to know. Mm. Well, the, <laughs> my most memorable one, and it didn't go badly for me, and I was just on the sidelines, was um, 
And, and this, I admit, is the bias of me because I'm an English teacher and I started my first learning community as a comp drudge in a philosophy class. So I, I, I fear the drudge onus. Um, but this was a comp teacher and somebody in social science who thought that two hours was the appropriate time for that discipline to be instructed. Sense. I, I know. I know the. Yeah. So that's I, that. That one I think was a crash and burn, mm -hmm. and the students were at least coming to the comp teacher and saying, "When do we get instruction?" Right. What in the comp? Composition. Oh. English composition. Are there not requirements though for meeting hours that have to be accomplished in a learning community? Yeah. Flip that page over. <laughs> so how did it happen that your hours, okay? Okay, I, I would think that some of this has had to do with a power differential in the two instructors. One person was full-time, the composition teacher was adjunct. My department has the most adjuncts of any department in the college. So there are more people willing to, to cooperate and learn more stuff and get out of English. I mean, we do English Lit plus English Comp out because you know, nobody's there sometimes. But in this case, the students had to approach her privately and say, Lamont, couldn't you give us some... Mm -hmm. wow. okay. yeah. Yes, Jim. Yeah, the faculty I've interviewed that have taught learning communities, I think the most commonly frustrated individual in a learning community has been the composition instructor. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so a, lot, a lot of learning communities, uh, it's very rewarding, it's wonderful for the composition instructor. Those that go south and don't do well is where the composition instructor is seen as the one without content. Mm -hmm. And so they're there to serve the interest of the instructor who's teaching the content. And so the integration is all falls on the comp teacher and not at all on the content teacher. Right. And therefore, we're going to do my thing. I'm not changing anything. You do all the, the change, all the, all, the, all the morphing has to be on your part, so the English teacher has to do that all. They get short change in the amount of class time they actually have to talk, teach the skills. It can happen in math, too, and wherever, whatever's seen as a skill versus a content. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, the, there almost has to be an agreement. We're going to have equal time. It's going to be totally, total integration on both parts. And, it, and, it, and I think that's where you, where you get the negotiating skills of the workplace, because you, both teachers have to be able to communicate with one another. And I think a shared commitment to texts is where that conversation has to happen before the bookstore orders are due, and that they're everybody's texts, not just one person's texts. Oh, yes, Joe. While it is often the assumption that comp instructors are the or stepchild in learning communities. I've worked with comp instructors who elsewhere. Elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that perhaps that isn't quite the case. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I sort of say that tongue in cheek because I've heard comp well, comp always gets disrespected. And I'm like, well keep your stinking hands off my class. Okay? Because if, Everything we're going to do is going to wrap around your research assignment, and as the, the large lecturer, sort of, I guess, content person in learning, it was sort of like, as long as it has something to do with politics, you can do with it whatever you want. But it requires, in learning community, it requires a lot of understanding and people and cooperation that Alexis talks about. And the interesting thing is when you put learning communities together, when instructors talk, Sometimes it's very easy to work with who you think is a friend. And sometimes it is absolutely best not to work with someone who you think who is a dear friend. Because I've been in both of those situations where the friendship gets in the way of delivering a balanced class. And it's, it's a tricky thing, so you almost need a Learning community prenup. <laughs> <laughs> I think it also goes back to planning. I mean, think about just the integrated assignments that we did. We started planning those in June for the fall. 
Right. Be under trying to and trying to make sure mm -hmm. our syllabi were even designed correctly so we could integrate those. And we both were flexible about when we were gonna. Yeah, I felt like that. that. Like that went really. That went really well. Yeah. But it was. It was a lot of. I mean, but it really came down to what it was. Is what we just like two common lectures and two mm -hmm. common assignments. But it was, it was a lot of work that just went into. Yeah. Those, those collected few hours. Yeah, and I think that's just the thing that planning really works too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of knowing, having an idea about what you're going into. We, we have sort of a, a blurry thing in the screen that, that uh, it's a it's a kind of a, a relationship inventory um, that has you reflect on your teaching style and what's important to you and it's based on the Ten Commandments of learning communities. So you can be aware before you get into it of what you're willing to give up, what you're not willing to give up. Yeah, and you, and you give up a, a lot as a content, you know, from your content, you can give up an awful lot, probably, of <coughs> what you normally might cover in order to do other things in the assignment. And assess, how to assess them mm -hmm. becomes a, a very tricky thing. Um, but it involves a lot of planning. It should involve a lot of planning ahead of time, and talking things through. And the other thing is that when you do learning communities, when they crash and burn, I mean, or crash, crash landing. Yeah. I mean, I've had a complete disruption and the refuel. But, you know, to sort of have that willingness to sort of, okay, what worked, what didn't work, let's go back, let's try a couple different assignments, and let's see how we can do that. Right and I think one of the things you would want to know if proposing a learning community is that the community really works hard to make sure that if it, you know, your first time is your first time, and that it's, you know, nobody expects perfection, but that you'll get another shot at it if you're interested. And so that, you, you know, you're not investing all this effort for one time of refreshment. You're, re, you're investing all this effort to make it better uh, this time and the next time. So I think that's a, a, a plus for learning. There still is a stipend, right? Oh, yes, I do want to say that. So on the um, piece of paper that you have, it's the mission statement, <coughs> it's, the, it's what we think outcomes are, and we do assess those outcomes. Every learning community gets a survey at the end that goes to instructional um, IR, instructional research, um, and you get, a fee you get feedback from your learning community uh, uh, based on that. And, um, but there are three different formats for learning communities, and that tells you what the load is. If you're an adjunct, then that's one third of your load. Um, if, it's, if it's linked courses, it's two thirds. If it's paired, then it's three thirds if it's part of a three-way learning community. So that counts. And for planning, every member is paid a $250 stipend the first time it's offered. So you, you get, we invest, the college invests in your success. The first time the course the first is time. Up, up yeah. together, yeah. not the first time. Not subsequently, thanks for learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been any kind of assessment of students as far as down the road, taking a related community, has their success rate been higher? Oh, when the kind of institutional success that Sally does doesn't suggest that their retention is higher or that their um, maintenance in, uh, educate, in higher ed is higher. That's the way Sally investigates it. Joe has methodological problems with the way Sally investigates learning communities. Okay, I take, is any one class a predictor of college success? No. Well, you know, let me just note that in the late, I mean, this is ancient history now, but in 1999, uh, Carolyn Stevens and Nell Hallenberg and I were, and a lot of other people too, but uh, really invested a couple quarters in a qualitative study, I mean, where, we, where we interviewed students, we did, uh, in any case, it was quite positive. Students, I mean, and there were statistical elements too. There's at least likely to be a short term decrease in attrition because, I mean, if only for practical reasons, students are less likely to want to drop two classes or three than one. You know, I mean, that's, that's not necessarily saying anything except for logistics. But uh, in, 
in terms of student engagement, most students said they would like to take another learning community. I mean, obviously, there were some outliers. And so that does come up in the in the quarterly reports we get. They all almost probably a rate close to eighty to eighty five percent say they would like another learning. Community. as far as the English department goes, we've done looked at statistics for portfolio assessment of English 101, and students in learning communities pass that assessment at a higher rate than the standard one. I once heard that the, to propose a learning community, that, like for example, two, two courses linked together mm -hmm. yeah, in a learning community, that, do the teachers need to decide just one textbook for two courses? They could they could decide on four textbooks for two uh, courses. That I mean it's okay. up to the teachers. Ursula, you have yeah, a question. How is the decision made which classes should pair up? Well, sometimes we have little speed dating events where people <laughs> meet other other faculty. Um, it's often helpful and I say this only as a load as a load logistics person, not as a partisan of my department. English composition sells. English composition sections fill up. And then after they're all filled, people look at learning communities. And that's and so those those are having a comp component helps, but it's not necessary. Say given our recent conversations about the right of students that they Yeah. So Ursula, what do you teach? Addiction studies. Oh, yes. We, yeah, we have plenty of students in English 98, English 99 who are in addiction studies. Oh, yes, and so. Struggle, yes, yes. With English, expressing themselves. But, 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 but. Addiction studies in chemistry. Make your own method. Addiction studies and <laughs> occupational therapy. We could call it Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Is it held out in a Winnebago? It was a party. I think, in terms of how you find people, some of it's just organic. It's just trying to be an interest in learning communities and seeking somebody out. That's how it happened with me, was just being told, actually, your advice was start with comp. Figure out. Use that as your movement into one of your courses. Mm -hmm. Big, big load content courses. Figure out how to. But Ursula, I would be happy to um, solicit amongst developmental writing teachers on your behalf. I'll, I'll be. I'll put out the email today. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Good. And how are they listed in the CCC link? Oh, how do you, don't ask. CCC link, but no. But there how is, do you there find is no it? link. <laughs> yeah, there's no link in CPF. <laughs> yeah. How are they identified? How can I vote? They're, They're called the English 98, that. English 99. Those so are just two numbers? And yes. The no, no. Okay, so how that, do I know with whether something is I think learning. she's saying if she looked oh, at spring schedule, how could she look it up? Right now. Well, if you looked at the spring schedule, you would find one learning community, which is a link, and it's global cinema, and intercultural communication. But when you go to the drop down menu, you look for learning community. Okay. Is that right? Is that the one who changed? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> no, I think that's right. But you, in that case, you have to be explicitly looking for a learning community. Mm -hmm. The problem is a board can't happenstance upon them, or it's much more difficult. Like it used to be able to like, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, oh, this comp section is still open, but it's what it is. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's where we have to figure out 
how to advertise. A little, I mean, the, the flyers are great, they're everywhere, but, but getting it out in a different way. Yeah. We have a lot of students come to the library and register. Oh, no, no, definitely. And we used definitely. to have that brochure. Oh. You know, and that was easy just to distribute with them and mm -hmm. talk with them about it. Um, other venues, if you try to, I've not even attempted lately to try to find it on our website. But, you know, that if, well, we want them to see what's available, maybe just to print something printed. Because the posters are up, the posters are all over, but it doesn't really connect. Yeah, and Ursula, if you go online to the students' interface and click mm -hmm. on Learning Communities, it's a drop-down menu, and mm -hmm. it gives you the schedule for the current quarter and the next quarter. Okay. And it's inaccurate right now because a learning community was just canceled. It was the three-way learning community that involved composition, photography, and poetry. That did not get the enrollment it needed, so there's really only one. And they are linked courses rather than integrated so one person will be teaching at 8:30, one at 9 30 <coughs> sharing concepts and how are students made aware of that link by dr hitting learning communities and if they know what they are yeah. yeah well i think we've exhausted our time by no no, eight we, minutes. It, it, no, no we, we can go to 12 40. No, because I have to eat lunch. This is good, yeah. While you were great, great, yeah, format of round bag. Thank you. I'm just so shocked because this is the time of the quarter everyone's dead. And so <laughs> I need to think about something new. Yeah. I love the format you do with the brown bag today. It's really uh, in interactive. Well, I, I mean, that method of write and talk and then share, yeah. I, I learned. In my first Learning. year at Spokane Falls from Rita Snowstein, uh, um, who gave a three-day workshop. Mm -hmm. at, but it's so useful for a learning community. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and you need this piece of paper. Not